All right, now we have this question here. Um, I put this picture because this is how a lot of people feel about these particular questions <laughs> with Grumpy Cat. I don't know why I'm laughing my own dumb jokes. It's not even me who made this. Okay, let's look at this question first of all. We're given this. We're given f prime of x equals 3x squared over x cubed plus 1, all that to the power of 5. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. And we're told some boundary conditions. We're told that f at 0 equals 1. So we're sort of hoping to do something with that. And we're told to find f of x. We're like, uh, oh, crap. Now, a lot of students get really confused by these, and rightly so. I think there are some hard parts to this. But I think these kinds of questions, if you sort of master integration by substitution, then these kinds of questions you'll look forward to because they're, well, I wouldn't say it's easy, but um, they're totally doable. Most students, though, uh, I remember the examiner's report for this one, uh, a lot of students did not even attempt this. They certainly did poorly on this one. But in any case, let's take a look at this and let's see what we can do with it. If we want to find f of x and we're given f primed of x, it helps to know something about that. So this is a more generic thing. We can say that uh, f of x is just going to be equal to the integral of f prime of x. If you remember how derivatives work and integrals work, that's how we do it. So if we're given f primed, we want the original function. You know, we want this original function f of x, whose derivative is this thing. Then if you start with this thing, if you want the original function, you've got to do the opposite of derivatives, and that's an integral. So that's the first sort of key step to knowing what to do is this concept here. We've got to do the integral of f prime of x. So then, now we can start hunting for how to do the integral. So now we're going to do, all right, so f of x is going to equal the integral, or the antiderivative, of this gross thing here. So we're going to put it down. So 3x squared over x cubed plus 5, uh, whoa, not plus 5, plus 1 all that to the 5, and if we really want to be careful with our notation, we need to put the dx. It tells us it's an integral with respect to x. All right. Now what? How do we do this? You might be thinking, oh, well, I just do a product rule. and Sorry, not product rule, quotient rule, because this thing is divided by this thing. But with integrals, there's no quotient rule. There's no product rule. In order to solve an integral, they've got to be easy. They've got to be things like just e to the x or sine or just a... Um, just a polynomial. We have no tools to do something that's a uh, quotient like this. Or even if you look at the bottom here, this looks like uh, if it was a derivative, you might be thinking, oh, this whole thing to the 5, that's chain rule. But there's no chain rule for integrals either. So you think, oh, God, we can't solve this at all. But it turns out you absolutely can because there's only one trick we're allowed to use. In MathSL, we have one extra tool. So this is my trick to you. If it looks really complicated and gross and you're supposed to integrate it, you're probably doing integration by substitution. And they absolutely love to have you do this on exams. This is very, very common. So definitely learn how to do this. So what we're trying to do with integration by substitution, this is the generic idea behind it. So there's another generic uh, thing here. That what we're trying to do here, we're trying to look for a function that is a derivative of the other. So watch carefully. We're going to have this thing. We're going to call it a function of u. Now, a lot of my students, you know, when they see this f of u, I teach my students, see, so give the question the middle finger. See, you give it, you say, f u, question. See, you give it, oh, maybe I shouldn't draw it. But basically, give the question the middle finger, then you remember it's f u. So it's a function of u. And we have this trick. Turns out that if you have some function of u times the derivative of it, in other words, if we have du dx, so we take this function of u, and we're multiplying it by du dx, and then we do this integral, which is dx. Then we say that we can do this, the integral of f of u. It's almost like the dx's cancel out. You get this. This is like the magical trick. It's like, ooh, magic. This is the integration by substitution sort of idea. Now, how do we actually use that? Because this looks like garbage, okay? But when you first look at it, let's see if we can do this. Let's guess at some value of u. Now, when I'm going to guess at some value of u, I've got a hint for you, is that you should use the highest power. So in other words, you can guess that u is 3x squared. Then you're going to have to find du dx. You're going to have to find its derivative. And it's going to be something with an x to the 1, and that's not going to work. So instead, always guess that u is the highest exponent. So we're going to try to ignore this 5 here. So we're going to guess that u is 
x cubed plus 1. Uh, now, you could have guessed it's 3x squared. I'll just show you. It wouldn't have worked out. But if you do this, then you have to find du dx. So if u is x cubed plus 1, then du dx is just the derivative of this thing with respect to x. Right? That's what this represents. That means take your equation for u and take the x derivative. So in this case, I have x cubed. Uh, the derivative of that, remember, we take the 3, put it in front. And the exponent becomes one less, so it's this. And then a constant number, that just disappears. And a little trick that I like to show students is that if you take this right here, always get dx by itself. So in other words, isolate for dx. So put the dx on top, that means you have a du over 3x squared. Now you're going to take this now and use this notation. You're going to put that into here. So what I mean by that? is now we're going to rewrite this function. So it looks really ugly. We're going to make it look even worse for a second here. We're going to do the integral of. Now, let's maybe split this up. Let's just see this as two separate things. This is x cubed plus 1 to the 5, like this. It's like 1 over that, times 3x squared times dx. Do you see how we can actually write it like that? And if we write it like this, it's the same thing. I'm just splitting them up. I hope that you'll see, maybe it's more apparent, that that's the integral of, let's see, 1 over, and instead of this x cubed plus 1, we're going to call that, remember, that's u. That's this. So we're going to say 1 over, and it's u to the power of 5. Then I still have my 3x squared hanging out, so I'm just going to write down the 3x squared. I'm actually going to leave it. Times dx. Remember I said that dx was du over 3x squared here? So that comes down here. So I'm going to say, fine, it's du over 3x squared. And look what magically happens in this case. The so 3x squared and the 3x squared, those disappear. So now I'm left with something much easier. I'm left with this. That is the integral of 1 over u to the 5 du. That's much easier to look at. So let's take this now and keep going with it. So if we have f of x, uh, remember it was equal to 1 over, oops, sorry, the integral of 1 over u to the 5 du. We can rewrite this to be more calculus friendly. We can say that that's equal to the integral of, and instead of saying u to the 5, we can say u to the minus 5. That's the same thing as 1 over u to the 5 is the same thing as u to the minus 5 du. Because now this is easier to integrate. Do you remember if we had something like an integral of like x squared, what it would be? Do you remember that? It would be, we always add 1 to the exponent, so it would be x cubed over 3. And we'd also say plus c, of course. Now, we don't need that in this case. We have u to the minus 5. But we're still going to do the same idea. We're going to say that is, see, no longer do I need the integral symbol because now I'm evaluating it. It's u to the power of, and what's 1 more than minus 5? In other words, what's minus 5 plus 1? It's minus 4. Don't forget, I have to divide that by the same number, minus 4. And I'll also say plus c, plus a constant. Now let's maybe try to fix this up a little bit. Um, this minus 4 here, I don't really like that. So we can say then that we can say it's a minus 1 over 4. That's the same thing as saying 1 over minus 4. And u to the minus 4 is the same thing as saying u to the fourth on the bottom here. Did you know that's the same? Maybe I'll just pretty it up a little bit. I'll say this. I'll say over 4u to the 4. That's what's going on here. Because we have the minus 1 over 4. That's this one right here, the minus 1 over 4. And I have a u to the power of 4 here, plus c, of course. Now, i got to fill in what, four, what u is. So f of x equals minus 1 over 4 times. And instead of u, don't forget, we have that u is x cubed plus 1. So we put that in here, so x cubed plus 1, because that's what u was. And don't forget, we've got to do that to the power of 4, don't forget that one, and plus c. And normally we'd be done, we'd say, aha, hooray, we finished it. Because this right here was an indefinite integral. Most people think that that's what we often do. But here they gave us boundary conditions. Now we get to use this piece of information right here. This right here now becomes important that f of 0 equals 1. So what do we do with that bit of information? Oh, actually, that looks really gross to look at. I don't like looking at that color. Oh, well. I guess I've got something against this color. Uh, so if we do this right here, so f of 0 equals 1. We can use this fact. We know that when x equals 0, we know that this whole thing gives you, whoops, not 0, but 1. 
I should uh, erase that one. There we go. And I should put in a one here. So that means when I make x equal to zero, okay, so I'm going to do that over here. So when I make x equal to zero, so one over four times zero cubed plus one, all that to the power of four, all that plus c, I know that f of x is going to be one. So I put in a one here. Therefore, I can keep going. The one equals, let's see, negative one over four times, and zero cubed is zero. Uh, plus 1 is just 1. 1 to the power of 4 is just 1, because it's 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. Uh, so that's actually just this, plus 1. Uh, so I get, let's see, I've got minus 1 over 4 plus c. So if I want to get c by itself, because that's the whole idea behind this integration constant. Remember, if you do this, this is because we didn't know the bounds, but if we know the bounds, we know the boundary conditions, this constant, the reason why this is because when you do this derivative, this number disappears, right? No matter what you put in here, you take its derivative, this one disappears. But we've got to find this original value. So now we have the information we needed. We needed this in order to help us to find c. So let's keep going then. So then c equals, I can put my minus 1 fourth to the other side, so now I have 1 plus 1 fourth. If I do that, I can try to get that all in one line. So that means I can get, uh, I need them all over 4. So I need something over 4. So um, this is like 1 over 1 right now. I need them both over 4. So 1 times what gives you 4? Well, 4. So 1 times 4 is 4. So 4 over 4 is the same thing. Plus 1 over 4. So I can say that c equals 4 over 4 plus 1 over 4, which is 5 over 4. Phew! So finally, now we're finally done. Now we have the full answer. We can say f of x, so therefore f of x equals minus 1 over, we're just rewriting this here, 4 times x cubed plus 1, all that to the power of 4, and all that instead of plus c, we say plus 5 over 4. Phew! Oh god. So that was a little bit gross. Um, I think you'll agree. A lot of students do not like doing this at all, and I understand why. It, it is kind of gross. But do you see how this is how we can solve a, a really quite tough question? So you might think this is super bad, and you might in fact feel like throwing up when you see these questions. And yes, I had copied and pasted this and it was ready, so that way I could just paste this and say, well, there you go. It's almost like a unicorn barfing some rainbows. <laughs> but there we go. We've solved this question. So it started off looking pretty gross. It ended up being actually pretty gross, but we got there. We solved it. So if you can practice on your own how to do integration by substitution, uh, this is really a good skill to practice. It's quite often on exams. This is really important, and you can actually get this, so you won't have to feel like the uh, barfing unicorn.